we're back to the 1972 Colt 250cc one lung racer. So I'm back to working on this sled. So quick recap, I bought it back from a guy that I sold it to a few years ago. Uh, motor had a burnt piston, did a little work on the motor, got a few other things I got to work on on the sled as well. So uh, you see me hone out that cylinder, I suppose the next thing I ought to do really is get the motor back together, right? Well, I don't know, I work in whatever random order I feel like. So I'm probably going to put this bolt, this bumper on next. It's not bolted yet, as you can see. And then I need to put an Indy Master Cylinder on the brakes. That should be fine. And then, yeah, I should probably get after the motor, make her run. Um, I don't think there's much else to do after that. I guess we'll find out. You never know what you're going to find until you try to drive it. So here's the scoop on this bumper. We bought that 73 Colt part sled for, uh, for Lonnie's Gemini Colt conversion. Uh, he left the original Gemini bumper on the back, and that left this laying around. Uh, it's pretty close to fitting. Looks like i got to drill a couple holes and bolt her up. guess I'll do that quick, and I'll bring you back. Well, that was five minutes of my life that was well spent. Uh, this bumper makes it a lot easier to handle. Prior to that, I'd been using these hand holds. That's what Colts had when they didn't come with the back bumper, apparently. But uh, just drilled the holes, everything lined up, bolted up. I didn't have to flex it around or anything. So uh, good to go on that. All right, so I've been rounding up all my motor parts, and I'm sure I've got everything. So got a gasket set, the cylinder, of course, got the piston, the head, a whole bunch of stuff behind me. Um, I will say this. I did just run in the house with the cylinder, washed it out in the laundry tub with Tide or a Tide equivalent, and wiped it with paper towels, and I got no stain off of it. So that means it's good to go. Gave the board just a light oil so it won't flash rust. So we won't need this for a while. Or the piston. Or the head. Or this bag of hardware. Or these gaskets. I mean, we'll be coming back to them, but let's get them out of the way because I'm tearing the bottom end of this thing down. So this thing had a catastrophic meltdown. There was all kinds of aluminum in the uh, top rod bearing. Looked like crap. It's been sitting out open for like two years. Uh, yeah, it was in an action packer tub, but who knows what's in there. So we're going to rip her down, uh, take a good look at it, reseal everything, uh, new crank seals, reseal the split, and uh, bring her back together. I don't know. It just seems like a good idea, and it's not like I'm running out of time. So let's get this clutch out of here. <laughs> Always anti-seize your clutch puller. Just good for it. it. Makes it work better, keeps it from galling in the threads, makes it take less force to get your clutch off. It's a great thing to do. Ah! And put your put your impact in the proper direction. There we go. Nothing to it. Uh, the part that makes contact looks pretty clean. A little rust right here at the opening, but that's because this is a straight taper, but the taper in the crank only goes this deep, and then there's a gap. All right, what next? Motor mount, I suppose? Flywheel. Let's get the flywheel off next. So, I like to take the recoil cup off first. You don't have to. Not always. Yeah, 
right, there's our cup. Oh, great. Got a bolt down here. It's not bent. That's good. Maybe we'll pull out all these bolts. All right. So, flywheel on this particular motor is a 30 millimeter. Well, we'll get this little point cover off. This would be a good time to look at the points, too. And once again, make sure it's in the correct direction before you hit it. All right. All right, I'm going to go get my flywheel puller, and uh, we'll bring you back when I got that set up. So as you can see, it's a it's a three bolt flywheel. So we're going to use the SLP maximum duty puller here. Uh, always use a good puller and use good quality hardware on that puller because if that stuff gets damaged, it's going to mess up your motor and you'll wish you'd use something better. So this is not a cheap puller, but if you work on Polaris as much, uh, this is a good investment. However, bear in mind it is for three and six bolt patterns only. Uh, you won't be doing your TXs and TXLs with this puller. There we go. Looks good in there. So far so good in here. We'll check those points a little closer in a bit. All right, so before I pull the stator, I want to show you this motor, unfortunately, has this little tiny grommet, and you're not fitting that connector through there. So your options are all less than pleasant. I don't recommend unsoldering and pulling your wires back through. No. What I recommend is taking a good picture of this connector so you know what wire goes where, and then you're going to have to deep in the connector and basically knock out that grommet and pull the wires through one at a time. Um, we'll get to that once I get these stator screws out. All right, so uh, stator screws on this motor are number two. Other motors are often a number three. Make sure you got the right bit. Make sure it fits good. So this stator is marked. I made some small marks. I haven't had this motor all the way apart before. But uh, I've had the stator off. I've done some work. You can see my horrible solder job there. I had to do the condenser at one point. So uh, it is what it is. So we'll get this thing back out. So now we'll get that grommet pushed through. I don't know. I may even not do the wires. I might just let this thing just dangle. I might just let it dangle there. It's not going to be apart very long. What the hell? Let's do that. If it bugs me, I can take it out later. Let's get this motor plate off of here. So these bolts do have a torque specification, but you can't find it in the motor part. I think you find it in the body part or in the chassis part of the manual. Uh, I think they're about 50 foot-pounds. We'll look it up later when we're putting it back on. Motor plate weighs about as much as the motor. All right. Let's get the fuel pump and the coil off. We'll do the fuel pump first. So the fuel pump mounts right to the motor on these. And a lot of other early Polaris's. Uh, that's just how they were. Got a little gasket down there. Um, technically, I suppose I could leave it. It's all on the one case half, but uh, I don't know. We'll leave that gasket on there, though. All right, let's get the coil off. Hmm. Now, the stator was number two, but the coil seems to be number three, so I'll be right back. All right, so as you can tell, these are the case half bolts, and this case doesn't split like a twin. It splits vertically, 
the bearings are a light press fit on each side so uh let's see let's see how this goes sometimes they come right apart uh sometimes they're more of a pain all right we are not going to hit anything with this hammer let me grab the soft hammer we'll give it some persuasion all right, I can see there's case sealer on this, so I know it's going to need a little love. Don't get too crazy, especially in these lighter parts out here. It is dowel pinned, if I remember correctly, so don't try to spin it either. Boy, she's, she's feeling pretty glued. Let's see if we can uh, do this. Oh, we get a we get a little bit of a opening starting to show. I'm gonna say a thousand gentle taps are better than one big one. There we go. Getting the seal broke. Oh, she's coming all right well that's interesting so the bearing stayed in that half and uh, the rest of the crank came out in this half pretty wild well, let's uh let's knock the crank out can't change the seal with the crank stuck in there There we go. Bearing stayed in both halves. Pretty wild. But I think we'll be able to get in there, pry the seals off. I don't see anything else too egregious going on in here. A little bit of rust staining in there. But uh, I don't know. She's a one lunger. She'll run. Uh, this seems uh, doesn't rock very much. Feels fine. What I can see, I don't see any rust on it. Let's, uh, let's do this. Yep, so I'm looking through the window there. and Looks like she'll live. All right, I guess we'll get to those seals then. So on the bottom of one of my least used drawers of tools, I found this seal pulling device. I don't know if it's guaranteed to pull the seal, but it's guaranteed to wreck it. Let's see if we can get her in there. Not on the first try. You're right through the metal there. There it goes. Second try. Not bad. There we go. Happy with that. All right, I'm going to get things cleaned up, and we'll start putting it back together. Well, I don't like how that feels. I don't like it one bit. Uh, looks like we're going to get some new crank bearings. Hopefully I can find them. All right, so there's the bearings. Knocked them out. Uh, these are readily available bearings. 6206C3 with uh, with no seals. So uh, I got three fresh bearings coming. We'll have them by next weekend. So uh, I guess I'm just going to clean this mess up and uh, bag and tag everything so it's ready to go once I'm putting the motor back together. All right, I got to get back to this Colt. Uh, it's been a few days since I ordered those bearings. They're still not here. I got a couple other things I got to get done. One is a brake master cylinder. Boy, boy howdy, I'm running low on these uh, indie clamp-on style master cylinders. Going to have to do some swap meat chopping. But I found this one, and it's got the cool blue handle on it. So uh, I'll rebuild that quick, and uh, we'll get her swapped onto the sled. All right, let's start the rebuild process. So I, I cheated. 
I fought that rubber baffle in. Once again, I consider that to be optional. I'm, I'm not big on it. But uh, everything's clean. Everything looks good. Um, first step on the rebuild process is get rid of the old O-ring and the old U-cup. So the O-ring. Well, looks like I get a little more cleaning after I get that O-ring off. I'll have to wipe that out. I bet it's the same under the U-cup. These are going in the garbage. I don't care if I poke them with the with the deal here or what. All right, clean enough. U cup. The U cup is a Polaris 5410164, and I always get those from Polaris, but there's probably aftermarket. But they use that U cup for decades, literally decades. So uh, once again. Um, I doubt you'll be able to read it, but 5410164. So the U-cup, uh, the open end, goes. it goes in this end groove that's the wide groove, and the open end goes, goes to the end here. The O-ring, I used to buy these also from Polaris, but they're just a 113 EPDM O-ring. Um... Eventually, when I uh, figured out what they were, I just bought a bag of a hundred. So, there we go. Piston O-ring. Next, I got to lube this stuff up. We just do a little, little brake fluid there. And uh, I've got my tool. Remember that from the previous videos where I rebuilt master cylinders. And uh, the tool does pretty good. Um, you know, you could probably do this with, <laughs> literally make something out of a water bottle or a beer can or whatever. But the point, the point of the tool is just to guide that seal in. Because remember, you got the open end of that ring going in first and it's, it's hitting a nice sharp wedge. Oh, what did I forget? I totally screwed that up. Not a big deal. Let me get this out of here. Let me knock that out again. Super easy. Just push it back through that hole. All right. Here's what I forgot. First is this little washer. It just drops in there. And uh, if it's not sitting flat, give it a poke. Make it sit flat. There we go. So that washer is essentially a seat for this spring. And the spring just goes in there. All right, back to my tool. And uh, I do have a previous video that shows you what the dimensions are in that tool if you really want to make one. Um, but I know other people have accomplished this without the tool. I mean, people have been rebuilding these things for years. All right, because the spring wants to fall out, I'm going to set this up a little more horizontal. Put the tool all the way up. Kind of give a little twist and a little hulu dance on the, on the piston, and in it goes. All right, your first check is, does it work? Right there, it's moving, it's springing back. We're happy with that. So we'll clamp this up again in the vise. And we're going to put our fancy blue lever back on. But uh, there we go. Full stroke. All right, so that's it. I mean, it's rebuilt. Um, I'll put the lid and stuff on when I get it on the sled, but good to go. All right, here's the heart of the matter. This one's seized. Could I unseize it? Maybe. Do I want to unseize it while it's on the sled? No. And it is stuck to the handlebars. So we're going to cut that thing off.
And I cut through it on the top. I scored it pretty good on the bottom. And there we go. Hey, look. Those were chrome handlebars once upon a time. Well, there we go. Brakes are breaking again. Life is good. I gotta take care of that seat pretty soon. I got a plan there too. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, YouTube. We think you know what these cups are about. This is a salute to Toby. So, anyways. Tommy was going to bring over the next project we're going to start on tonight, but it didn't work out. So we're still on this, and uh, we got two things left to do. I'm still waiting on my crank bearings like you saw earlier in the video, but I think I need a seat upgrade. Oh, this yeah. isn't much of an upgrade, but it, Not will, really. it will be by the time it goes on there. So right, then. I think we're going to do a seat cover tonight. Oh, fun. Oh, boy. It'll be fun, they said. Yeah. It'll be great. Just, just like the we just, we just get, Yeah, just, just clean the we just do yeah. one of those? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, should I get out the cutting torch to stretch the seat? <laughs> the steamer. Maybe, maybe we'll use the steamer. Yeah, yeah. Can we have With battling? Or at, least, or at least a heat gun. We'll probably realistically use the heat gun. On, yeah, yeah. On low. On low. On low. From a distance. Yeah. But make uh, sure you got gloves on. All right, yeah. all right, let's get all to right. it. All right, so we'll get to it. We're gonna we're gonna set up something somewhere and work on a seat Detail. tonight. You ready? Well, ready? Cheers. Ripping her down. Rip her down, man. She's gotta come apart. I think you're looking for a got smoke. a good lens. Yeah, you need a smoked lens for that. Got a rivet, rivet. Something cool. You got rivets holding the, the light on. So well, 300 staples right. later, we'll have the cover off. We'll bring you back. Oh, <laughs> right. boy, I think it's brittle. Oh, this stuff oh, is so brittle. It, Holy crap. That's why we're not fixing it, guys. <laughs> oh. yep. That's beyond shugu. Yep, I went around yeah. with popping each rivet. You want to take all the old rip, uh, staples out, correct? Side yeah. yeah, that's the plan. Got a so side cutter. Side cutter? Yep, grab it and pop it. Yeah. That'd be... My right. advice to you. All right, we'll bring you back. All right, many hands make light work. We got this side done in like record time here. We had three screwdrivers on that side. We should have three screwdrivers on the other side, but I'm filming because, you know. And they're drinking. And they're drinking. We couldn't get five of us in on this thing no matter what. So we're almost done stripping her down. We'll get out the, what are we going to use? Lighter fluid and a match to heat up the seat cover? Sounds good. Yeah, Sounds something good like that. Me. Yeah. <laughs> I watch these Just extra long staples. staples so. Why, so. Did, they, why did they use yeah. half inch oh, long yeah, staples on this oh. thing? Oh, Ouch. So well, she's coming up. Oh, look at that. Not bad. Oh, we got the strap in the seat. Oh, dude. No, it's easy. You got to reach your hand in. I know. So Give it the reach around, Lonnie. Every yeah, slide is 10,000. Look at this, Lonnie's got his whole fist in there. Oh, oh hey now. No, yeah, no. Yeah, there's a strap on the cover that goes through the seat. Oh, there wow. we go. We, yeah, we know. I already got it. He got Way it. Way to go, Poindexter. Oh, shit, All right. <laughs> we just did this a couple weeks ago. <laughs> oh. Gotta watch my beer. Oh, oh. nice. My beer's not as protected because it's in an open top Toby cup. Ah, see, it Just was good. Like that. See why I pulled all those staples out that looked like they didn't go to anything? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I figured they might. There we go. And this <coughs> goes in here. That foam is actually a really good shape. Yeah. yeah. Heck yeah. All right. Let's uh, put the new one on. Well, we're gonna we're gonna clean all the staples off the table before we start on the new cover. Yep, thanks. You filming? All right, looks like we're done. Look at <laughs> yeah, this is a perfect install. Oh. Perfect fit. First thing we gotta do is feed this through. Jam jam the strap on through. And we might have to tie a knot in it if it's not tight enough. Well, Tommy and I just went through this on an RX on an RX Doesn't it have the piece on it? It does, but we might have, still might have to tie a knot. But this is not a factory cover. That might be extra long. We don't know. The silence. Here, let me use a no, screwdriver no, to jam no. it. You're just gonna all you do is tear the foam up, <laughs> or jam the screwdriver into your hand. <laughs> or jam the screwdriver into my hand. You already banged up his knee. <laughs> God, it's right there. Come that on. was an immovable object. 
That was not your fault. Come on. So this is like where the, you enter the 30 minutes later. The, the strap <laughs> length is about right is what Lonnie's yeah, telling Yeah, yeah, strap length's perfect. I just gotta, Well, you can slide this back another inch. No, I got to get the buckle to stand up right. Yep. That's the problem. Just getting the buckle there she goes. Come on. Come on. Boy, I wish I could play music, but YouTube won't let me. Cause Red Solo Cup. I got, I got some Toby Key queued up. Bada bing. Lonnie got it? Yeah. All right, let's flip this over to the back. See, I had I had huh? practice. Huh? <laughs> That's about right. You don't want it sucked in too tight. <coughs> All right, she's looking pretty good. I think it's, uh, is it staple tight? Yeah. Pretty I soon. I, I think so. so. I don't know if you noticed, but this cover's, oh, about ten times as stretchy as that one we just did on Tommy's sled. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say the, the one we took off. Well, yeah. the one we took off might, have, might as well have been made of. was not stretchy at all. It was brittle. brittle. Classic. Well, there we go. We're going to start in the middle. Fold some overs. Staples ready. In the middle. Hold on. Monkey in the middle. Pretty good. All right, we got four staples. Four test that's staples. All. That's all. So we aren't. We're expecting to be baggy up here. We're starting back here. It's about right. And then a little wrinkly, but that'll pull out when we go up to the front there. When we work our way up, because the staples are, are like right here in the back, in the back corner. Yep. So uh, yeah. So whole lines up, right? Yep. Whole lines up. This right here is. Good, we got plenty to staple to back here for the this, light. I should have cut this foam out so there's more room to get, I mean, to get soda cans. <laughs> yeah, to get, to get soda cans. Spark plugs. Beverages. Spark yeah. plugs. Yeah, to get beverages in there. Yeah. We can do that. We can, uh, do, we that. can do that later, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's get right, stapled. I'm happy with this. Right on. This is a, this is a good staple day. All right, so now the trick is... We're going to pull up and kind of go forward line. Yeah, to get the wrinkles out. Yep. Okay, go. Oh! All right, let's do uh, Let's do the other yeah. side. Jesus. We're, get, we're getting there, though. We're happy. Feeling good? Okay, yep, right there. Yep. Okay, got to move your hand. Yep. All right. Why you Flip. All right, where are we at? I'm a happy man. This is... This is more than good enough for a one lung Colt racer. I suppose I should show them the modification. Let's see, what did I do with that? Did a Look at that sexy seat. Here's our, here's our modification. We uh, trimmed this foam back <gasps> to make it easier to insert it's not beverages, be objects. It's not original now. Yeah, well, uh, now we can <laughs> fit things into here easier. Yeah, yeah. Whatever those things are. Yeah, toolkit. 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 You got to be able to get the toe strap. <laughs> toe strap in case somebody melts a piston on a scorpion. Never happens. Oh, that never happens. Didn't Fire happen to me. <laughs> oh, wait. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. <laughs> All right, here, here's your look. We got her set where she's going to set, and I love it. Not a bad seat for a vintage racer. Not bad. Dennis, how much space do we have between the seat and the gas tank? Uh, let's try this out here. Is it two and a half inches? That looks like our two and a half, two inch feeler Perfect. gauge. Our two inch feeler gauge is just about right. So uh, yeah, I won't be up hugging the tank real hard on that one. We're just kidding there, folks, we think. But uh, pretty happy with that. Have you sat on it yet? Not even sat on it yet. I wanna show them how the, we got the light just inside this ledge. Which yeah, is yeah, what we yeah, what we like. She'll bolt down nice and tight. She'll bolt down tight. We already have the bolts in it. Let's see. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. See, it's perfect. I'm glad we didn't move it any further yeah. forward. This is where I ride. Yeah, because you do ride back. I ride way back. So absolutely perfect. Camila likes it. Camila likes it. Farley has gas. I assume that's Farley I smell. Well, I gotta finish mounting it, it do a few stamps, a few snaps, and we're done. <laughs> All right, Lonnie's seeing if he likes the fit. We might do an XCR seat on his sled. Oh. What do you think, Lon? I think we might have a. Oh, wait a minute. 
Oh. Yeah, I think we might. Yeah, my bars are up here. If we put the ape hangers on? Put ape hangers on her, man. I might, I might do it. Ape hangers and a twist grip? I really don't see much. Should we get a twist grip? Yeah, buddy. There we go. <laughs> I don't see much difference. Yeah, clearly the old seat and the new seat are nearly identical. <laughs> these, the, these pads down here don't do anything for me. Though. Not, well, you don't They don't for you, but feet, they do I for me. My feet back there. Yeah, for me, yeah. I use them. So. I like it. That's a nice seat, man. Ooh. It's those are comfy. There's your that's suspension a, right there. It's all that's the a seat. nice seat. I like that seat. That's the second best seat after the first year XLT. <laughs> that is the primo best seat they ever made. Yeah, man. First year XLT. Oh As my goodness. Like on your cool. like on your XLT. Yeah. What does Camila think? She likes it. She's got a ball. All the dogs approve. She's got a ball. She's got a ball. All right. Lonnie, it's calling your name. Yeah, I don't Whoa. know. That one is pretty. <laughs> I think we could do a nice cover on it. Yeah, you know. It's definitely calling your name, Lonnie. Your colt wants it. <laughs> I don't know, man. Can we do a 600 on it? Well, first we'd have to. <laughs> so what you're saying is you want to rip the that cover off and see how awesome the foam looks well yeah we, we know we can see there's perhaps there's a some little, there's some spots a, a small amount of foam repair to do yeah but uh we can make this pretty nice for lonnie i think it's mostly that one area right yeah, there the rest of it's right not there. bad i got some super 77 and we'll find some spare foam and glue it in there all right ah. and we get and we got water well it's been outside uh, yeah it's out in the snowstorm because that's how i store yeah snow that's how i store yeah, valuable things PM. outside there you go Nutter, I'm confused. First pizza out of the uh, Nutter Speed Shop pizza oven. Brand new edition. Thank you, patrons. And, of course, thanks to Tommy, who insisted we buy one. <laughs> so, I like uh, it. It's awesome. Uh, for the record, first pizza is a uh, brew pub, lots of matza, chicken Alfredo. Nice. And it smells delicious. The dogs seem to agree. The it dogs smells delicious. Extremely worked up about. All this. right, and and what's it sitting on here? Grandma's antique living room table, which is not where it's going to end up. No, we're going to do a project. All right, project. Want to show them over there? Show them the countertop. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is courtesy of Tommy again. Tommy got, picked up a countertop. We got a countertop. We're going to make a shelf somewhere along this wall over here. In this area, the only rule is it has to stay below the light switches because you have to be able to use these. But we want it as high as we can because... What, what's with the power thing here? Dogs are yeah, large. That, that's not going to work. That's a 220. We're going to have yeah, to do a 110 just, over here. It's just not going to work. We're going to have to do a 110. <laughs> I don't know. We're going to look in this box. Maybe there's a 110 in there. All right. I don't know. We'll All right, let, let's eat some pizza. Let's eat some pizza. Thank, Thank you, you, patrons. All right, here's how I attach the front of an XCR seat. So you can see how the base is. It's got these channels. I just bend up a bracket with an offset of about one material thickness. And um, I'll just pop rivet these down wherever they need to go and slide the seat up on those. Uh, that'll do the front. The back here, uh, there's studs on the tunnel. And then, of course, the XCR has these flaps. So uh, I'll be installing the uh, the snaps there after I get the front of it and the back of it locked down. All right, so here's all those finished up. Got a few rivets in each one, and the seat will just slide in, and it'll kind of wedge into, this, uh, into that bend there. And uh, it'll be great. Won't go anywhere. Right, there's a steering brace that you should do on a Colt. It's almost mandatory. If you have the engine out, you should drag your welder out and do this. So uh, right here, you can see it's an old piece of a cleat, but we made a nice triangle out of that. And uh, it's going to really fight that steering bracket from bending. So uh, if you got a Colt, give that a consideration. All right, it's a week later. Uh, I've had my bearings for a few days, but life's been busy. Um, cleaned up my case halves. Uh, I've got my little laser thermometer device here. And uh, what we're going to do, what I'm going to try to do, is warm up the case halves with the torch to 180, 200, somewhere in that area. And then hopefully the bearings just drop right in. 
Um, if they don't, the backup plan is to run over the press and press them in. We know that'll work, but uh, let's try it the finesse way first. So here goes. I suppose what I could have done is put the bearings in the freezer, but I don't want to get condensation on them, so let's try this. All right, a few things. First off, non-chlorinated brake cleaner. I didn't poison myself with the torch. I know somebody's going to flip out. No, it's non-chlorinated. It's the chlorinated stuff that'll kill you if you burn it. That's fine. Also, I dried off the cases thoroughly. There was no brake cleaner left on it when I heated them up with the torch. So, everything went back together really good. Uh, that first bearing just took a little bit, like you saw, but uh, it went right in. Second bearing dropped in. This one dropped in. And uh, thus, I'm slightly paranoid about driving the seal in. So, I'm going to set it up on this... Uh, on this tool, which is also what I used in the press, so that I don't knock my bearings out while I knock my seal in. Here we go. Looks straight. Didn't knock my bearing out. Sounds like a brand new bearing. Life's good. I think we're coming back with the crank next. All right, I got my uh, Fuji 250 engine stand here, which is just an old ATV cylinder. And we'll drop the crank in. Get the crank nice and clean in a plastic bag. It should just go. Shouldn't be fighting me. We might want a little rubber hammer action. There we go. Seems awesome. The point of that cylinder is just to give the PTO in somewhere to go. Uh, I got my brand new tube of 3 Bond 1144. That doesn't happen very often. Ooh, that's a lot. That's probably enough. Maybe. You don't need much. Uh, these are machined very well. Some might argue that's too much. I think it's just fine. Um, I'm using an 1184. I've used the other stuff, the white stuff as well. They both work fine. Take your pick. I'm sure somebody out there has got a really strong opinion, but uh, no, they're both okay. There we go. So the halves are dull pinned together. So uh, next step is to torque everything. Feels plenty smooth. Real good. Okay, let's torque these. So these are 8mm bolts, so they go to 18 foot-pounds. I know the service manual says there might be some 10mm bolts. There's not. Always, always torque your stator screws back on tight with one of these. All right, we're at the piston part of this deal. So this is the exact piston, and I mean the exact piston that I measured with, even though I got two more over there on the shelves. Got some various other items in here. I got my uh, thrust washers. I got a brand new needle bearing. 
Of course, the piston came with a pin. It came with circlips. Rings are in this box. We'll get to those eventually. So, first thing we're going to do is put the needle bearing in. And uh, I don't want it to just slide out. So we're going to stick a hammer handle or something under the side of it. I think. Maybe. Maybe something taller than a hammer handle. Maybe a hammer head. All right, so the first thing we're going to get to is the needle bearing. So I got the case sitting fairly level, and um, I'm going to oil this thing. Let's see, I thought I had a zip tie for an oil dipper sitting over here. Definitely want some oil on that for startup. All right, piston talked about this already and uh, which way do the uh, ring gaps go and on this one the ring gaps well they straddle the exhaust port one's on each side of it and so the arrow like a lot of Polaris's the arrow points to the mag side so now's where it gets tricky we've got these little thrust bearings which I'm gonna oil these up a little bit too I mean everything should be oily Alright, so we got these little thrust bearings, and uh, I will typically just hang them on there, and gravity is my friend. Now I need the pin. I suppose I should have that open and ready to go. Now, sometimes the pins just slide in like that. That's great. That's your friend. Uh, if you have to, I don't recommend beating on it. I recommend heating the piston, even if you got to wear some heavy gloves. Uh, still a better option than any kind of brute force. But there we go. Just like that, the pistons, well, essentially on. Now i got to do the circlips. The circlips want to go flying. These are your enemy. They want to do bad things to you. Um, I don't know what to say. It's almost better to do it with two people around so that somebody can help you somehow. All right, I got my circlips in. They're in the direction as specified in the manual. And uh, I have my rings on. And uh, the rings can really only fit one way because the pin isn't centered. It's at the top of the ring land. So uh, that's all good. And uh, now it's time to start juicing up this bottom end with a bunch of oil. And I did have some oil in the bearings back before I uh, put the seals in and all that. But, you know... More is better. I mean, what's the worst it's going to do? It's going to smoke a little bit? I don't know. I think I got plenty of oil on the top end there on, the, on that uh, upper needle bearing. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we'll make a big stinky cloud. It's better than seizing your motor. All right, that should be excessive amounts of oil. Which is exactly what we want. Excessive. All right. Get your base gasket. Purposely waited till after I oiled. You know, that way I don't have my base gasket all oil soaked. Got the cylinder. This is the exhaust side facing towards you. The brass nuts are a pretty good clue. If it fights you, don't fight it back. Finesse it. There we go. Just had to wiggle the rings past the entrance of the transfer port. Good to go. You hear that? Sounds like six thousandths of an inch clearance to me. Let's get those base gasket nuts torqued. 
All right, time to torque the cylinder base nuts. So I've got this Motion Pro adapter you can see on here. And um, yep, it makes it longer. When you buy it, it comes with this sheet. It has a whole bunch of information, including the formula. Uh, long story short, for this particular adapter, on this particular torque wrench, I set it to 21 foot-pounds in order to get 25. And you do want to keep it in line with the torque wrench. There we go. All right, there's my 25. Cool tool, right? I want to say thanks to my friend Mike for telling me about this tool. Uh, really appreciate it, buddy. All right, cylinder head time. So just stock on cut head, but it does say exhaust side, and the reason it says that is because there's these bosses for the fan shroud. Exhaust is facing me. Uh, even if it didn't say that, I'd remember those were away from the flywheel side. So I'm going to round up my hardware and torque this down. Pressure testing it. Super homebrewed this time, even more homebrewed than normal. So uh, down here, this is where the fuel pump mounts. It mounts right to the crankcase, so there's no hose nipple. So I just blocked it off with an M6 bolt and a flat washer. Carb, well, I didn't have the right size anything for that, so I just made a rubber gasket out of some soft red rubber. Same for the exhaust. Tighten them down under the flanges. Pretty good, because I'm only testing to 7 pounds, which it's holding very nicely. Um, this little whip hose right here, uh, that came from a car leak down tester, and then I just did this little hardware setup to adapt it to my usual gauges. So uh, there we go. Pressure testing Polaris 250 single cylinders. Victory beer for a successful long block build. Uh, the pressure test was perfect, and now it's just buttoning it up. Uh, I'm going to do that off camera. You guys have seen us build a lot of engines. I I'm in a hurry. Sorry. Uh, we'll build more engines in the future, but uh, I'm just going to get this one together. And uh, when I bring it back, it'll be in the sled, hopefully. Hopefully running, and hopefully we'll take it for a drive. And that'll be yet in this video. Um, I'm not editing the video until it either drives or there's some kind of catastrophic failure. Let's hope for driving. fire on the rebuild. Carb bowl is empty. Probably take a couple squirts. She's bumping. Choke? Maybe? Drives. Seems like it needs a little tuning, but uh, let's drive it a little more. Oh, <laughs> oh,
right? You saw those first passes, my first test runs, and uh, you know me, I can't leave well enough alone. It was running, it wasn't great. Uh, I've done some tuning. Uh, I've changed the pilot significantly. I've changed the main jet significantly. That's really it. All I've done is carb tuning. Uh, I did put some fresher gas in it and uh, she feels way, way, way better. So uh, we're gonna go out and do some more test hits and run it around the yard. Well, that is a well-deserved victory beer. Um, I got the carbs whipped into shape on this thing. Real happy with the carbs. Uh, clutching still leaves a little bit to de be desired. Uh, we're going to come back and run this thing against Lonnie's. Right now, I think I think this motor is making more power than Lonnie's, but I think Lonnie's has got better clutching. So we're going to race them and work on the clutching on this, work on Lonnie's carbs, try to get his motor up a little bit. That's a future episode. But, uh, you know, I'm really happy with this sled. This is really the first time I've driven it in years. In fact, it's definitely the only time I've driven it in years is, is after I got this motor rebuilt. And, uh, geez, it just, it handles great. It turns great. I've got eight inches of carbide on the skis. I got a rubber track conversion with studs. Uh, I've got a 76 TX skid on it, which is the newest skid you're, you're allowed to run according to the class rules. So, and I've got forged spindles from a TXL. Uh, you know, it's pretty well set up. I got the Makuni carb, I got the Polaris clutch, all legal for the class I'm gonna run it in. 
So I couldn't be happier with the sled. Uh, I think it's gonna make a great one lung racer. Even as it is right now, if you go back and look at the wild bill last year and look at people taking off, off the line, um, it would certainly be competitive. Nobody was jackrabbiting out of the hole there. Everybody was, you know, kind of boggy, uh, just kind of brrrr up to speed. Uh, certainly it would smoke that scorpion I rode last year. Uh, the skedaddler is still going to take it out of the hole. Clearly the skedaddler is making more power and the clutching is really well dialed in on that thing. So, uh, Anyways, when I get this thing dialed in a little bit better though, you know, we may have to line it up against the Skedaddler and Lonnie's. Maybe all three at once so we get Tommy over here to ride one. So with that said, huge thanks to the patrons for your support of the channel. Um, for everybody that doesn't know, the patrons give us a little support each month and uh, in return, they get to watch all the videos ad-free on the Patreon. They get to see them early. Um, get their name up on the screen as you can see uh, so we really appreciate it you guys have seen lots of patreon pizza moments in the recent videos and and uh, you guys are the best so uh everybody else you know at least please hit subscribe if you made it this far into the video you like these videos hit subscribe maybe hit the notification bell so you know when i got a new one coming out and uh hopefully we'll see you on the trails